everyone! Welcome to the Moto Muse vlog. Uh, I'm Hannah, and today I wanted to do a kind of a fun, different video than I've done before, but I wanted to share with you a visual oil change checklist because when I, when I first started working on my bike, and believe me, I still have a lot that I'm learning about, but when I first started working on my bike, I started with an oil change. And so I feel like it's it's an easy thing to think, oh, what do I need? I need a new, new filter, some oil, and like, yeah, maybe like a wrench or two. But there's actually a lot more that goes in to changing your oil if you really want to do it correctly. And so I thought that since it's something that I had to learn after far too many trips to the store and, and too many questions, uh, I would share my experience and uh, share with you this oil change checklist. Now, <laughs> oil change checklist. Now, I am not a mechanic. I am just someone who loves my motorcycle and am loving working on it and maintaining it myself. So if you have any mechanic friends that are telling you something different or have more information on some of the things that I'm sharing on this list, like by all means, listen to them. But I just wanted to give you a starting point, um, an area that would hopefully be beneficial. So without further ado, number one on my checklist is coveralls or some sort of grungy clothing. Because while you do want to be able to move around and reach things on your bike, you're going to get dirty. You're going to be laying on the ground, oils involved. Like you don't want to be wearing your, your Lululemons and like getting them destroyed <laughs> while, while you're working on your bike. So, um, a pair of coveralls, something to just keep your clothing safe. Or if you just have some old clothes that you're like, yeah, these can get dirty. I do my gardening in them, whatever, like, great. So grungy clothes. Second up, you really should wear some sort of gloves. Now this may be an optional thing for a lot of people, but, uh, there's actually a lot of various chemicals and things that are in your like in your oil in your bike that you probably shouldn't be touching so um just to be safe some latex gloves just some simple disposables um really useful so all right the obvious one really oil gotta have oil now you really want to check your motorcycle's manual for what kind of oil your bike needs. For example, the 15W50 is what uh, my husband's R6 uses, whereas the 10W40 is what my Ninja uses. So you just want to make sure that you're using the right oil for your bike and you can check your manual. If you don't have your manual, you can either Google it or you can, like, you can Google the answer or you can also Google your manual for your bike and be able to get like a PDF of it, which is actually a really great way. Download that onto your phone and then you have it always on you. So next up, oil filters. Okay. So oil filters, there are kind of two different types of filter styles that um, are out there. There are cartridge filters, which typically look something like this and they are actually um, housed in a, in a compartment on your bike. So like there's like a covering for it that you will have to likely take off and then remove the filter out of that. And then there are um, what's typically called like a spin-on filter um, where it's all contained. The, so everything that you kind of saw on that one is actually contained in this piece. And it um, oftentimes you can spin them on by hand or you might need a special specialty tool, which I will get to a little bit later, but yes. So there are two different types of filter types. You can, um, you can look these up. Uh, usually I just go to the motorcycle shop and there will usually be a book for like whatever the brand is like, this is K and N and then this is actually the Yamaha official oil filters. And you can look in their book, look up your motorcycle and it'll tell you what filter type or size to get and you can just pick that up there. So there's a lot of different ways to check. You can also, again, Google is great. Um, and it should also be in your manual what type and size filter you might need. So 
filters, very important because you don't want to put clean oil through a dirty oil filter. It's just kind of negating the point of changing your oil. So yes. Uh, next up, we have drain crush washers. Now, these can have different terminology depending on your bike. Uh, I know that it's called a gasket for the Kawasaki and when you like click on it, if you're looking at the OEM parts, it says that it's the drain plug gasket. So, um, whereas like other bikes may call it, like actually call it a crush washer, but uh, if you go to an auto parts store, whether um, it's AutoZone or Cycle Gear or any of those places, they'll know what you're talking about when you ask for a crush washer. It's basically uh, a washer that is a soft metal that will kind of, um, there's a cat over there. <laughs> it'll, it, but the metal's soft, so it'll kind of compress and help fill in this, um, this gap. <laughs> so it's, it needs to be like a soft, malleable, uh, washer. I can actually show you. I've got a couple here, so maybe, maybe I can show you. There we go. All right. So this is the Kawasaki washer. It's definitely got a pretty basic washer look to it. I believe it's aluminum. And this is what the Yamaha crush washer looks like. So it kind of has like, there's a couple layers to it. It's more round, kind of like a donut. Oop. But yeah, so you can kind of see. But they, they both do the same thing. They both, um, will get the job done. It's just, you wanna make sure you're getting the right size for your bike. So um, it's good to look up your OEM, but it can be a little confusing. Again, you can always ask at the store. Uh, this is where hopefully by having this checklist, you'll be able to go in, ask all your questions, get everything in one fell swoop and be ready to go home and change your oil. So yeah. Um, ooh, oil drain pan. This part, really important. You absolutely need something to catch your oil. Like the, when you loosen all your bolts, the oil's gonna drain out of your bike. You gotta catch it. You don't want that going all over the concrete, all over the ground. Like it's already, honestly, enough of it's gonna end up everywhere that you just, you wanna negate as much of that as possible. So um, I highly recommend, there's different types of drain pans. I mean, that more like kind of coolish looking ones like this. And then there's like the basic one that's basically just a plastic pan. Um, the reason that I like this one, um, and I, I mean, this one's got its issues. It's, uh, you gotta be careful cause it can, it's got a little like thing for draining that can leak. But uh, what I really like about this one, I wanna put that on that bike, Sorry. is it's got this nice catch grate. And this is really, really nice because when you're loosening your bolts, sometimes things can just like fall because gravity works. Um, this will catch it. The oil will still drain down, but it'll catch your, your nuts and bolts. And then you're not having to dig through the oil <laughs> to find your, your pieces for your bike. So uh, I really like having one with a catch grate on it. I just think it's worth investing in something like this. And since you're getting oil out of bike, you're probably not gonna fill this up. Um, so it's not, it's like a good size. So, um, yes. Uh, and while we're on the subject of oil, uh, you will need to dispose properly of your oil. This isn't something you can just throw in the garbage and you can't just like pour it down a drain or into the street like there's no. No. So, um, it's okay if you didn't know that, like we all, I, I actually didn't know that before I changed my oil for my, myself for the first time. So, uh, what is nice about something like this is if you don't have a container, you can just take this oftentimes to Riley's AutoZone. A lot of those places will recycle oil for you or dispose of oil for you. Recycle. They'll take your used oil. <laughs> so it's important. And so you can take this there and like hopefully if it doesn't spill in your car or anything like if this stays sealed <laughs> uh you can get everything drained at their shop the other option is once you have um 
finished off a container of oil, don't throw this away. You can actually put your used oil, drain it into here, and then when one is full of old oil, mark that it's old oil so you don't put it in your bike. But once it's full, you can take this in and then dispose of it. You can also use like an empty milk carton or juice jug. Uh, just, yeah, probably something that you're not gonna use again after. <laughs> All right, if you're putting oil in your bike, you probably would like an, oh my gosh, an oil funnel. <laughs> I'm like, it's not a filter. What is this called? It says it right on here. I'm so good at this, you guys. Anyways, probably want an oil <laughs> funnel to help uh, get things in. Now, if you're my husband, he likes to live on the wild side and he just pours the bottle right in. It's like, I know myself. I will get it everywhere. And I don't want to have to go to the store and get another thing of oil because I just poured it down the driveway. So I recommend getting a little oil funnel. They're, they're super cheap. Um, this one actually is brand new because I uh, I recently started acquiring my own toolbox. Blah, blah, oh my gosh, my own toolbox. And so I'm getting all my own gadgets and gizmos to go in it and so I knew I would need a funnel so this one's my funnel. If you are going to be uh, using this for say your clean oil and say you want to use a funnel to drain your oil drip pan you would definitely want to use a different funnel. You don't want to get the gritty stuff in what's going to be your clean funnel. So if you're going to be using or needing a second funnel just get a second funnel Dirty one, clean one. You just don't. You just don't want to gunk up your new oil. <laughs> so that's my recommendation for that. Um, I have already told you about the disposal. Just it's really, really um, important to dispose of your oil correctly. So, all right. Uh, yes. Next up, you will need a socket and ratchet or wrench to remove the drain bolt from your uh, oil filter. So uh, if you are using a socket and ratchet, oh my gosh, I just wanna call this a wrench. If you're using a socket and ratchet, then uh, just make sure that you know the right size of your drain bolt. Um, and actually it is good to know this anyways because you will need it for your torque wrench, which I'll go over next. But uh, it's good to know. Um, I know for my Ninja, it has actually a 17 millimeter uh, bolt size. So then I can just get the socket that's the 17 millimeter and use the ratchet or socket stick, as I like to call it. Um, so you've got that. Um, you can also, however, use if you've got wrenches. Um, these also work great. Um, I really like these ones because they've got the ability to, can't hold too many things at once, this is wonderful. You can angle this, which is also really nice because sometimes when you're trying to get under a bike, you just need like, just awkward enough of an angle. And so it can help to have something that'll bend. Uh, but I mean, even just a basic wrench works great. You just need to make sure you know what size you need. Um, and there are actually, uh, yeah. Yes, so you just need to know what size you need. <laughs> okay. Now, as I said earlier, you it's good to know what your socket size is, what your drain bolt size is, because uh, while you technically can use your socket and ratchet to put your drain bolt back on, you really wanna use a torque wrench. Um, this was a new understanding for me because I didn't quite understand, but a torque wrench is a very specific tool. You don't use this to take things off. This is all about applying the right amount of torque and pressure to your bolt when you are putting it back on because you don't want your bolt to be too loose, but you also don't want it to be too tight. So uh, it's a very clever tool that I'm still, uh, still learning how to use correctly, but uh, it's got the, um, 
the number, the pounds down, like printed down here, and uh, you can set it to whatever you need so that you can make sure that you're putting the right amount of pressure on that bolt and and just because you, honestly you just you don't want your drain bolt <laughs> falling off while you're riding so torque wrench uh it seems like a lot because you're just using it for this one step but it's such an important step uh if you're going to change your oil you got to get a torque wrench worth the investment and and you can use the same socket so you can take this socket and put it on your torque wrench and so you just need this it's great so yay so I did put on uh, my checklist, which is something that you can also download if you would like. Uh, if you uh, sign up for our email newsletter, you can get our oil change checklist. And uh, it's so everything's written out. Everything is in this video, but I just wanted to make something that was really uh, easy to work with. I talk about filter removal tools. Now, um, like I showed you earlier, depending on the type of filters you have, you, some of them will just come out. They'll have a casing that comes out with a drain bolt. Um, others, you may actually need like a special tool. So for example, um, so this filter is one of the, the spin on ones, but it actually has like a special tool that has its own bolt on there to help you tighten and loosen it. So there is a possibility that you might need to get a special tool um, there is also another tool, I'll, I'll find a picture of it, that kind of looks like like a piece of metal wire, like a flattened piece of metal wire sheeting that wraps around, that you kind of like would wrap around your, your filter and you would use it to kind of shimmy it out. Um, that's not something that we've had to use in our house, so I don't have one to show you, but I'll find a picture and put it up in the video, maybe here. Uh, but yeah, so you may, you may, depending on the kind of filter your bike uses, need a special tool or attachment to get it in and out. But that's just going to be something that you need to look up either in your manual or online. And uh, another great resource if you don't have your manual or even if you do and you just want more information is the Haynes Manual. So you can check them out. They have a lot of great resources. So check that out. Uh, I have some bonus uh, things I think would be really helpful uh, for changing your oil. Now, these are the things that I think are a little more optional. Um, the first part of everything I've shown you, you really just, you kind of need these things or you're not going to be able to successfully change your oil or correctly <laughs> change your oil. So these other items are just kind of like nice to have. Um, if you don't have them, you can still do it. It's just, these are, these are good. So, uh, my first item all right so my first item is the oil drip tray which just looks like a giant cookie sheet mine is brand new I got one because my friend recommended it recommended it uh, I am notorious at like just making a mess in the driveway so uh, when she was like, you need to just get an oil drip tray pan. Um, oil drip tray is what this is. Uh, it looks like a giant cookie sheet, but you can just slide it under your bike to help catch any additional oil and mess. And it just, I mean, you just don't want your oil sinking into the concrete, you know? Why, why? So it's a much easier cleanup. And uh, and honestly, it's not even that hard to store. You just kind of like slide it behind a table. So uh, so I highly recommend this. Next, uh, next time I change my oil, you can bet you're gonna see this under my bike. Another bonus item that I think is so useful are these Blue Shop towels. Now you can get these at pretty much any automotive store. I think Costco might even sell like a big pack of them, but they're just like a really heavy duty uh, paper towel, but they're great for like, especially absorbing like goopy thick messes like oil. And it's, if you're also trying to like wipe something off like of a bolt or you get it on your tools or whatever, this is just gonna clean it up so much better than a regular paper towel. It just, it's, it's worth it. Like they're a little bit more spendy than a normal paper towel, but really for any garage grungy, what have you's they're just a really good item to have so highly recommend 
Also fun fact, they work as really good filters in face masks if you have cloth face masks, so. This one may sound silly, but I feel like half the time that I'm on the ground, I'm like kneeling like next to my bike and there's nothing more painful <laughs> than when you're like kneeling on concrete. And especially when like there's little rocks or nuts and bolts and stuff like you kneel down on those, oh lordy. So I highly recommend having a little kneeling pad. This is just a basic gardening one. I think I got it at Big Lots or something, but uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with a little kneeling pad. Just, I mean, this one has gotten very beat up and I, I just don't care. Like, it's just great because I can just put it down, kneel on it. If I have to lay down for a second, I lean on it, put more weight on it. It's just really makes makes the uh, concrete less of a, of a beast, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, yes. And then the final thing, which I will have to cut away and show you, is um, I can kind of like lift them up. But, uh, if you have some sort of rear stand um, or uh, front and rear stand is great or, uh, or even like a lift, these are not, you don't have to have these things. They by no means make, make it impossible if you don't have them. You can totally change your oil. However, if you do have like a lift for your bike or a front and rear stand or even just the rear stand, just getting that little extra elevation can help to kind of get under there and get a little more uh, mobility. So uh, definitely a good option to have um, uh, or to use, I should say. <laughs> um, if, you, if you're somebody who goes to the track, having a, a rear stand and a front stand especially, uh, you likely already have these. And if not, here's a great excuse to get them because they're great for the track, great for maintenance. So uh, highly recommend. But again, if not, you can totally still change your oil. It's not a big deal. That's just, again, it's just adding a little extra lift so you can get under, under the bike. So, um, and yeah. So with all of that shared, uh, I did put together uh, a full checklist of everything I talked about in this video. In fact, uh, everything's broken down into, I'm just gonna make a mess. Uh, I've actually, I typed everything out and kind of went over everything we talked about, uh, but it's nice to have kind of like a reference just in case. And I also made this handy dandy, I think it's handy dandy, I, a little personalized, personalized checklist for your bike where you can fill in the make, model, and year, as well as um, you can check off if you have everything, and especially for things like your oil type, filter type, drain crush washer size, your socket wrench and or drain bolt size, as well as the torque wrench, which should technically be the same size, but I just want to make sure that at a quick glance, you, you know you have everything you need. Um, oil filter removal tool if you need it or not, bonus options, and then if you want to make any additional notes, this is something you can fill out about your bike. So once you've done it one time, you don't ever have to look all this stuff up again. It'll be right here and you can keep it um, in your garage. You can, you know, if you fill it out, like this, it's a PDF thing. So if you wanted to fill it out on Adobe and just save it and then keep it on your phone for quick reference, like there's all sorts of options. Uh, but I just thought it, it's the sort of thing that for me, this is helpful for me to keep track of things as well. Um, I honestly wish I had a list like this when I first was learning how to work on my bike. And so that's why I thought I would make one and share it with everyone. So again, if you do want to get one of these, uh, I will share the link below. You can also go to motomusegear.com and check out the oil change checklist tab. So it's right there if you would like to get your own oil change checklist. And if you do uh, get this, let me know. Let me know what you think. If you feel like this was helpful, um, let me know if you felt like this video was helpful. I definitely have been super appreciative of all of my rider friends and my husband even helping me with everything I've been learning about bikes over the years. And especially shout out to my friend Kelly. She's amazing. She works on bikes all the time. And she, like, I picked her brain a lot to make sure I was getting a lot of these terminologies and things correct. Uh, so 
uh, it's just, it's so cool when you've got people that you can turn to and ask these questions. And so just in case you don't, uh, or you do, but you want to, you know, have, have a starting point on your own, like hopefully this, this list will be helpful for you. Uh, and if you do like something like this, uh, let me know if there's a different, uh, motorcycle maintenance thing that you would like a checklist for, cause chances are I would too. So yeah. Anyways, I hope that everyone is doing well. Happy new year. I can't even believe we're almost through January at this point. It's pretty crazy, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, just feeling really, really thankful for this motorcycle community. Thank you for, for spending the past however long this video ends up being <laughs> with me. And I hope that you found this useful. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and uh, sign up for our newsletter, get your oil change checklist, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Uh, got a hair in my face and it tickles. Ratchet. That, oh my good heavens to Betsy. Socket and ratchet.